we're going to get started. We're going to pray. This is a Sweeter Than Honey workshop. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you that you provide this beautiful place for us to come and gather. I thank you for these people that are here that just have a desire to teach your children. Lord, I pray that you would bless us, that you would inspire us, that you would motivate us, that you would be the one who speaks to us today. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we can do the things we need to do and that we can find joy in it and fun and motivate these children so that they love your word with just a passion, God, that it sticks with them and that it inspires them for their whole life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so something I want to share with you. So the reason why I titled it this Sweeter Than Honey is because in Psalm 119, but um, let's start this way because I promised myself I was going to do that first. So we're going to study, talk about how to teach kids God's word. Okay. And we're going to do it and I'm going to have different, like telling you different age levels so that you could, um, that you could modify things for them. So in the classroom, as they come in, my first thing uh, I w should have done was been at the door and greeted you guys and you know welcomed you and said hi and so glad you're here. But the first thing that, that after that is to pray and to say, hey, you know, in this class today, we're gonna learn about Psalm 1. So I've chosen the first three verses. Psalm 1 is, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. But the first thing what I would have said before I read that scripture was, Everyone open their Bible to Psalm 1. So if you have, who doesn't have a Bible today? Everybody has a Bible? Okay, so if I was going to have a group of, let's say, kids who can't read, second grade and, de and down, I would have already pre-marked the Bible to Psalm 1. In fact, I think I did it on one of these, I guess. I did it on all of them. Okay, so each of their Bibles would have been marked to Psalm 1 with a paper clip or a bookmark. And then maybe with the kids, I would have um, had them in their Bibles take your, you know, I would have given them all a highlighter and said, highlight verses 1 through 3. Now, if it's older kids, then if they're like second grader to like sixth grade, I would have said, and I like kids to all have the same Bible myself personally. so. Depending on what grade they were in, I might like have them all hand out this Bible because I want them to know that you always open your Bible whenever you're in my Bible class because for in church, we're teaching them about the Bible. We need to use our Bibles. So I always want them to say, open your Bible. So I might even say, it's on page 310 because, you know, Having kindergartners open their Bible, it can take like about five minutes. So you, so depending on their age level, you want them opening up their Bible. Some kids have those Bibles that are like um, Bibles that are like uh, storyteller Bibles, and those Bibles are great. But I want them to see the Bible, the word, the the whole word of God. And so I will hand out Bibles and say, that's why I said, does anybody not have a Bible? And then I would have them do that. The big kids, you know, they can find it themselves. But you're also teaching them how, where the Bible, you know, where it is. Oh, look, it's in, almost in the middle of the Bible or whatever. It's in the book of Psalms. So that's one thing that I would have done. And I would have handed out a highlighter and say, highlight this in your Bible. And then, now I read it myself, but... Uh, but I would say, hey, Hannah, can you read Psalm 1? And then I would have her read it. And because I want to teach them the repetition of memory, saying it again and saying it again. And the more they say it, the more times in your what? How many minutes do you have in your classroom with those kids? Like 30, 40 minutes? Well, the whole church service too, but they do worship and it depends on your grade level and what those kids are doing. So always pray first. Always tell them what you're going to learn. We're going to learn Psalm 1 today. Always say, open your Bible and 
for me, that is like one of the most important concepts to teach, but making it age appropriate. So for little kids, I would do more actions and more movements. We're gonna do some of those things. And um, another thing I would do is uh, write out the scripture. So I would just start writing out Blessed is the man. Now, I'm not going to write it all out today because I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to not waste my time, but I don't want, I want you guys to keep going and have a lot of stuff to teach you. So, so I would write out the whole scripture for you. Here's one thing I know about God's word. You guys know this. A lot of parents come to me or have come to me when their kids are like 17 or 18 or 20 or 23. And they say, my kid, he doesn't follow Jesus anymore. And it's so sad. And he's doing this and he's doing that. And I tell them, always tell them this. God's word is inside their heart. It's been poured inside them heart since you started pouring it or somebody else poured it. It's in there every day they wake up and they know that they're not living right for God. You just trust that God's word is mighty and awesome and it is able to cut our down to the marrow. It's going to do the work. You just keep pouring it in. And sometimes you feel like the kids don't get it or they don't understand you, but that's why you do different things to also activate their mind and their hands and their heart and their legs and their memory. And how many of you remember those silly uh, conjunction, junction, what's your point? When you were a little kid, you heard it, you saw it, you sang it. You remember those grammar things that they had on TV. That's what you need to do when you're motivating the kids to just remember what you're teaching them. So I would teach them the scripture, okay? So here we're, but I would do it depending on their grade level. So the little kids, I would say, blessed. What does blessed mean? And then what would one of you say? happy. Blessed is the man. How can we show happy? And so everybody would smile. smile. Okay. What's a way you could move your body to show happy? Jump. Jump. Okay. Stand up. Everybody stand up. For reals? Yeah, for reals. Okay. We're going to say blessed. We're going to say out loud and we're going to smile or do whatever thing you want to do. Ready? Blessed Amen. is the, how could we show man? Just go like this, man. Bless, okay, let's do it again. Blessed is the man, okay, who walks not. How could we show that? Okay, walking, but going not. So walking, not. Okay, let's do it again. Blessed is the man who walks not. Now I got to get it. In the council, how could we show council? What do you think? Somebody has counsel? How about, how about counsel? Because we're saying walks not in the counsel of the what? How would you show ungodliness? Kids sometimes make that face. Show everybody your face. That's what they do. Ungodly. Ready? Ugh, ungodly. Okay, let's start again. Blessed is the man who walks not in the council of the uh, same face right yeah. okay nor stands in the path of sinners same face right say it with me blessed is the man who walks not in the council of the ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners nor we're gonna sit so pretend like you're sitting nor sits in the seat, just go like this, because kids will do it anyway. <laughs> of the scornful, go like that, of the scornful. Okay, start again. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat, sorry, of the scornful, but, you say that, but, his, we're going to do delight, just like happy, his delight is in the law of the Lord. Okay, sit down. 
So stuff like that, kids love to do. And you just keep doing it and you keep doing it and you keep doing it and then they remember it. And they're like, yes, I remember it. And they, you, I saw the teachers sitting in during worship going, doing all the movements and all. <laughs> it sticks with you, you teach them like that. Um, so blessed, I just described all the scripture parts. So now if you were teaching older kids, you would say that word blessed means happiness. And who walks, that's showing, that word describes an action. So when you love God, you're going to walk. You're going to do things that show action. In the path of sinners is like the manner that you live. So depending on your age level, you're going to give them a uh, what do these words literally mean? You can do that with kindergartners. You can do that with high schoolers. You can do that with any age. And then see to the scoffer is like the situation, like the people you hang out with. You know, you're, you're going to hang out with good people or bad people. But that's what that word means. Scoffers is boastful or arrogant. Delight is pleasure. The law of the Lord is the instruction of the Lord. Meditates. And you know what I thought this was really interesting? Was that meditate, that word, specific word, refers to a roar or a growl or to utter or to speak. So guess what we would do when we got to that part? Rawr. And, um, but I also, it made me think about meditating is like, it's like, it's inside of you. You're thinking about it. It's, it's, you're, it's, it's deep. You can't go, rawr, right? If you saw a line and it went, rawr, you're going to go, so what? But if you go, rawr, it's coming. So you have to understand you're teaching the kids that God's word comes into you and you keep it inside of you. And it, comes out because you're meditating on it and you're just using that those illustrations and planting and withering and prospering so all, all those are all those ways that you do that also um, we're going to give you guys one of these before you leave today um i have like so many things here um and and here's another thing so in psalm 119 if can you guys open your bibles to psalm 119 Verses 102, 103 to 109. And so I added the scripture at the end, or uh, when you go to CEF Training Child Evangelism Fellowship, they tell you to have tabs on your whole Bible. Whatever your word, scripture you're going to use, make a tab, put a bookmark, something so you're always ready to go. So Psalm 119, 103. It's, uh, let's see. Judy, can you read that nice and loud? 103 to 109. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to okay, your Okay, you can stop there. So you're going to read the other scriptures that say, listen, it also talks about... Blessed is the man who walks on the counsel of the ungodly, stands in the path of the sinners, or sits in the seat of the scornful. You're going to say in 119, it also says how good God's word is to us. And so just little ways of reinforcing that God's word is awesome and mighty and it's powerful and it's so good to us and it's so good. And how, why would God use his word and use the word like honey? And then, you, then all the kids would say, because honey is sweet. Yeah, but do you know that honey never gets bad? I mean, it can get crusty. And if you get something inside of it that is like yogurt or whatever else you're trying to eat it with, then you can, the honey can get a little, like, I don't know. It can just get a little crusty or something. But if you have honey, 10 years from now, you can still eat that honey because that's how God made it. 
And I find that's interesting. And you just, you could bring honey in for the kids and they could taste it, you know, and go, yeah, it's so sweet. And it, it makes everything taste good. And, and you could relate that. You could bring food in and say, you know, that's how God's word is to us. It comes inside of us and it just makes us feel good and it's good for us. And people use honey for, for healing, for putting on like burns or whatever and they and they use it for a lot of different things and it's so great and you just relate that word to everything so um there's a a, a bunch of things that i wanted to show you you guys um but we're also going to give you this book before you leave so this is a little book that says getting to know jesus for little ones so in your classroom you're going to go we'll go through the activities last you're, you're, you bring them in, you talk to them, you, you greet them, you tell them what you're going to do, then you tell them what, you're, what you want them to learn, and then you verbally and physically learn that thing, and then you can do activities with them. But you never, ever, 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 not in your classroom with every time you teach kids, you never not give them the gospel. You always tell them, you know, Jesus we're all sinners. Wait a minute. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of godly, nor stands, I'm going to mess it up, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, and whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Yeah. God sent Jesus to die for our sins because he loves us, because he wants us to walk in his counsel in the way that Jesus taught us to, 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 to walk and how we should go because Jesus died for our sins so we could have eternal life. But we have to recognize that before we accept Jesus, we're the scoffers, we're the sinners, we're the ones who are mocking God. And we don't want to be like that. We want to receive Jesus into our life and we want to be changed so that we can be blessed and we can delight and we can meditate and we can be like those trees that are planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit. There's another scripture that says that we should be like trees of righteousness. What, is, what do trees provide? Shade and, and fruit and, and uh Places for kids, kids would say, to climb up on. And, and you can make a tree for it. And wow, don't you want to be like a tree? And so we're just we're relating the scripture to their daily life and helping them to appreciate. Isn't God so great? He uses the things that I live with every day to teach me about who he is. So you're making that psalm applicable to their daily life. Okay, so if I was teaching bigger kids, teenagers, or high school kids, I would on the board have them draw a diagram. Okay, so it says, here are the sinners. Oh, I can't remember. And sinners, and here's um, the man. The blessed man. And then I would have them come up here, and I would say, okay, who can name one positive aspect of the man who's blessed. What does he do? And the kids would say, well, he, he walks not, you know, and then, okay, but the sinner, what does he do? He, he is, he's not in the council. And so we would list all those things and they would come up here and they would list it or it would be, okay, I could say, let's divide the room in half. Okay. You have five minutes. One person get a piece of paper. The, oh, they're going to not like me. The second person get a piece of paper. They're recording this uh, in this group. And you have five minutes to come up with all the things that the sinner does and all the things that the unsinner, the, the godly person does. And whoever has the most gets a prize. And they're going to sit there and go, okay, he does this, he does that, blah, 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 blah. And okay, everybody come back. And then they're going to say, I'm going to say, okay, what is yours? And then they're going to point somebody and they're going to write. And then these guys are going to write. And then they're going to say, oh, well, who has the most? Well, it's not our fault. That's what the scripture says. But <laughs> let's see who had, the, who had the better observation. And they're going to win. So stuff like that. You know, just anything to get them getting up, moving, thinking, talking. You know, they might, I don't know if you were a high school teacher and you had high school kids. You know, who knows what you might. There's a lot of things you could do. You could get a piece of paper a big piece of paper, you put it across the board and you could say, okay, we're going to do 
the who, what, when, where, which is like an inductive. When you're teaching kids, you can teach them the inductive method in the you know, easiest way. Okay, let's list all the who's in these three verses. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the sinner, we're talking about the Lord, we're talking about his law, and then you just write them down. Okay, who, what are the what's? You know, what are the where's? Well, the where's are where he stands, where he sits, and I don't know if it's the when, or actually it should have been, who does this apply to? You know, it's always where, who does this scripture apply to? Older kids, you could make a mural. You could say, okay, you five kids, you're going to illustrate verse, the first part of this verse. And then the second kids, you're going to illustrate the, the, the second part, you know, like, I don't know, uh, blessed is the man. And then the next group is going to do walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know, and then they make this huge mural. You cut up the piece of paper, you give them all one, then they put it back up here. And then, you know, you're constantly saying the scripture, okay? And, and, and they're, you're just like simple things like that that they could do. Uh, the other thing I said was, let's see, that was the mural. Okay, so um, here's a... So here's another thing. Um, Kids, like I said, little kids, they like to act. They like to move around. So I could pass this all out to you, and you would cut out the circle. They're going to cut out the circle. They're going to get a paddle, and they're going to, uh, you know, one thing they could do. If it was little kids, then they could just draw a picture, just a picture, simple picture of blessed is the man. Maybe they could put a line down the middle, and on one side they could put the godly man and the ungodly man. If you have older kids, you know how they write, like, in circles? They could write the whole scripture in circle. I tell you what, you give a kid, any kid a piece of paper and a pen and crayons, and they will all come up with these amazing different things. But it's something that they do. They actually do when you're teaching them. So that's one idea. Um, here's another idea. And to read and trace the Bible verse. This one's a little, like, messed up, so it's not clear, but they could read and trace it. You know, it, this could be something that you do when they first walk into the classroom. This is already sitting at their table. See, in everything you're doing, you're reinforcing and reinforcing. So, I mean, you could make this up yourself. You can go online and find all kinds of... Right, we're going to ignore that. Uh, they've been having problems with uh, the sensors of the... Um, so unless they tell me to leave, we're not leaving. So it just happened yesterday. So you could do stuff like that. And you don't, you know, you could just make these up yourself. You don't have to go buy something or anything. You, you could go online and you could do it. Simple things like that. Here's another uh, little coloring book. And I, if you want these, you can, you can have these. I, I made copies for at least 30 people. So here's a coloring book. And it has the whole psalm on it. And you know what? You could be teaching this. I don't know, one time you could squeak it out to like, I don't know, a, each part of the verse each time. So this one has, um, and it's a different version. So each page is a part of the verse. So you could say, okay, we're going to learn this first, blah, blah, blah. And then, or you could just do it all at once. It depends on your time and what you have to do to teach them. But most of the time, I don't, because I haven't taught in children's ministry for a very long time. Um, most of the time, they have a theme and a purpose, and they're going from week to week. So you could do this with any topic, and kids love to color. This could be something you keep, and then you get it back from them. Hey, when you, when you know the whole verse, I'll give it back to you, you know? You know, hey, you've been working on it. How's it going? Um, so, do you guys teach a different verse every week, or is the same verse? It's one same. It's the same one. Okay. They, well, it depends. The older kids they teach the same. They, their memory verse is it's the same one, but for the little ones, it's a new verse every week. Okay. Oh, really? So the older kids do they? Uh, so they're learning much larger verses, or what? We have like a monthly memory verse. Okay. And each week has like a memory. Verse. Oh, okay, so okay. Kind of both. Okay. Yeah. So you could do an emoji thing. So I would give you this and your piece of paper, and you could use these to fill in the blank. So like here I have a fill in the blank, like literally. And I would say, okay, you guys, we're going to go, blessed is the, and they're going to look in their Bible, what word is missing? You could do this with anything, you know? And then they're looking and they're going, they have their Bible, they're looking at it. And maybe I would put this on the board for like the second grade and up, and I would say, okay, 
which word is missing? And now I have a kid come up and underline the word that's missing. Everybody fill it in. So you just change it out like that. You know, um, you could have, um, you could do a word, uh, like a word search. You could make a word search for the older kids. And you could put all the words in a line and then say, okay, find the, find the words that go to this verse. And you could put a one by the first let word and a two and a three. And they would just have to go through that because they're looking for the words. Um, here's like a little uh, paper that maybe, I know big kids would like to learn, do, well, big kids could learn more verses. So I would take this, they would let them color it, but I would also maybe make it into a puzzle before I even gave it to them, I would cut it up. And I would say, okay, um, here's your pieces. I put it in like a little bag. And um, here, you gotta put it back together. And that's, you, you know, that's, or I, the week before I would say, color this, I'd get it back from them. And then I would cut it up and say, put it back together, you know, or whatever. Um, for the lip, for any kids, I would do, okay, can you illustrate this verse? And I have my verse already printed. And I'd give them this paper and I'd say, okay, I want you to illustrate this verse. Now, you know, according to your age level, how long you could give these kids these, because <laughs> it can get crazy. But, you know, even if you said, okay, you know, we're, you know, or it could be a project that you work on, depending on how, I mean, on Sunday morning, you have a good time, but I don't know how much time do you actually have teaching, you know? 25 minutes. So you could do this with any concept. You could do, right, Pastor Ray talked about Moses in the bush. Okay, let's draw a picture of, of Moses being drawn out of the bush, you know? And you could just say, you know, we're going to do the background, okay? We're just going to do the background. Draw the water and the river and the, the sky. And then you could take this away from, put away those things because they get crazy. And then you give them a black marker and say, draw Moses. Draw his sister. Draw his mom. And then if you, you, um, if you didn't want, you would just take, okay, now we're going to take, what do I do with it? You're going to take the scripture and we're going to paste it to the back and we're going to read it. And we're going to read it and we're going to read it and we're going to read it. And whatever the scripture, did, if it would be, you know, a scripture about teaching kids about Moses, you know, and his, and his mom, you know, put him in the river and, and whatever. Whatever you were trying to teach, whatever the concept was. But like there's different ways you could do things. I mean, uh, high school kids, they will go crazy, you know. They, they could do really beautiful things with this. And it is a way not to be so boring. You know what I'm saying? Because high school kids, they don't just want to sit there and work on a piece of paper. They do that every day at school. And so you're going to make this fun and exciting for them. They're, and there's some kids that are really talented. And you're like, wow, that's pretty great. Or you could do a diorama to where they fold it up. In a, you know what that is? You fold the paper up. You get a piece of paper and you fold it. I don't know if that's a diorama. It's just me thinking it is. And you say, OK. We're going to fold this paper. How many parts of the story is it? Well, we have three verses. Blessed is the man. So we're going to put the part first verses here. We're going to draw it with a pencil. And the second one, maybe you want a bigger paper. I don't know. And the third verse is going to be here. Hey, draw a picture of that, you know. And then they could, you know, they could make it as crazy as they want, you know. Um, just finding ways to do things with kids. You can make a bookmark of any verse you're teaching them. Just a piece of paper. It's cardstock. You could bring up some string. They could put it in their Bible, and they could just always have it. I'm telling you, before I got saved, my mom gave me a, a, a scripture. She gave, she, my mom was Catholic, and she, uh, still alive, but uh, she wasn't, like, she didn't really know much about God's word. And she gave me a, a scripture, and it was, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. And it wasn't until I became a Christian, I was like, oh my gosh, God gave this to me from my mom. When, and it really meant a lot to me. It still means a lot to me. And it, it, it's a treasure that you're giving kids or you're like, you know, it's simple little things that, you know what? They make a little bookmark, like I said. Depending on their age, it's going to be this way or that way. But you know what? Even if they can't write, what you do is you copy that scripture. Maybe make it smaller than this and put it on the back, you know? And then they take that, hey, you know, uh, put this in your Bible, whatever. And it's something that you're doing that you're letting them become their own. Um, what else was we going to do? Also, one of the other things we were going to do, we, I would do with them is, so I wrote down every word of the, 
scripture here. Look how many pages, how many, and it's not even one word, but this is all the verses. So we might do the same thing with that and put this up here. I brought some magnets and I, I didn't even um, use them, but I would say, you know, Psalm 1, 1 through 3, and I might hand these out to all of you guys. And I would say, okay, you guys all have these. And uh, I was planning on doing more with you guys, but I'm like, how much more time do I have? I think I have um, until 325. So we still have a lot of time. Um, I, so we're just gonna do it, okay? So here, you hand out these and you hand out these. And then, and then what, another thing I would do, be, you know, just to do it a little bit differently, I might have had a, a little uh, thing on each one of those. Like a, I would glue this to it. And then I might keep some and I would have like half of those. And then you, I would say, okay, I'm gonna randomly give them to kids. And then I would say like maybe the key words that would be there. So that's another thing too you do with kids is you say, okay, so in that scripture, Psalm 1, 1 through 3, what are the most important words? Can we give them like more than one if necessary? Uh, no, bring me the rest. We'll just do it the way I said. And then they would come up here and they would, Oh, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. They would, um, and, and they might have this paper, and then they would be able to know, okay, what words are missing, and they could use those cards. Or I would give, I might give cards to each kid with the whole verse. Now, I chose three verses. That's a lot. But you might just give them one verse or something, and then you would have their little card, and they would study it, and they would try to memorize it. And then, you know, when you call kids up for memory verse, all the other kids would have their card, and they'd go, Err! and I would say, okay, if he makes a mistake, everybody go, Err! and so he would go, he would he would try to do it. You know how many times, yeah, the joy of kids, I know it, I know it, and then they go up there and they're like, they don't know it. <laughs> so you would use the other kids to help them. So you might say, okay, um, I'm gonna come up here and say, blessed is the, 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 no, because I didn't say anything bad. Blessed is uh, the kid, the, the man, and then I would say who, and then I would say, somebody help me. And, oh, I wouldn't say that, but the teacher would say that. And then you guys would help and say walks or whatever, okay? But if I was a kid trying to say the whole thing and I said it wrong, then you would do that, eh, or, or like this, lots of times I would just do this and do that. So you would help them and it wouldn't be so boring, the same kids you know, going up there, because you know, you gotta keep it moving. But so uh, there's different things that you can do with the kids could help you so that you're not the one and the kids are, who are listening are trying to discern and maybe they have this little piece of paper. You give it to them and they're going, nope, he said it wrong or whatever. And then they stand up and say, what word should he have said? And they said, oh, he does nor sits in the seat of the scoffer. And then they could read it and they could do it. So you're just trying to find ways of teaching them that is not just the, okay, everybody stand up. You know what I'm saying? And so always having whatever you're trying to teach them, whatever scripture, on a piece of paper or, like I said, in their Bible. You could even have the paper and say, okay, um, uh, this is the part we took out of the Bible. You have it in your Bible and you're, you're reading it with them because you always want to have them reading their Bibles and looking at their Bibles. So um, did I have any other ideas? Can I share something? Yes. One of the things I did was to use kind of a bunch of these, do a bunch of these. Mm -hmm. You can do it different colors and then have different teams and then you may have to raise the seams and put it together in order. Yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, to do it like a puzzle, to do it like that. So, so uh, another thing I would say is, so, what do you have on your page? Nor sits, okay. And what do you have? Does, you didn't give herself one? Who has blessed? Okay, could you bring it up here? So she's going to put blessed up here. Okay, can you show the class maybe the, the, what we would do to help remember the word blessed? Remember we said, remember we said, blessed. Okay, blessed. Okay, does anybody have is the man? 
did you not give them out in order? No. Okay. Okay. So then I might say, okay, Hannah, come up here and write, is the man? You know, it wouldn't have to be always the same way. Can't Hannah, come out, write, is that? Who has, um, who has the next verse? See, now I didn't give them out to you, and I should have, because, huh? No, here, pass one of these to everybody. Well, you have your Bibles. What comes next? You have your Bibles. Open your Bibles and look in your Bibles. Walks not. Okay, does anybody have walks not? Anybody have walks not? Who walks not? Who walks not? No. Okay, so then I would have somebody come and write it down. Okay, so you just keep going over it and over it. Um, what else? Another thing I would do is, Hannah, can you collect all those? I might put all of the cards in a bag, and I might, uh, I might like every, every, everybody would like pick out a card, and then and once they all got the cards, um, once they all picked a card, then they would like everybody would have their own bag with their own cards, okay, and then everybody would try to pick out the word that we're looking for. Blessed, okay, everybody get blessed. I might have a big strip of paper like. Um, is that all of them? I might have like a big long strip of paper. You know those, uh, let's see if I see one. You know how they have these, like, like in classrooms and stuff like that? I might have a big strip of paper and give every kid one. And whatever verse we were learning, blessed is the man who walks not in counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers. I might just have them pull out your bag and put the scripture in the order on that little piece of paper. And then maybe the next week we would learn the next verse or maybe we would learn the whole verse, but they would get it and they would read it and they would put it on there. So like there's, there's tons of things that you could do that are age appropriate, but always doing uh, this, the same kind of uh, just rep repetitive. Um, I said the bookmarks, mm, I'm missing something. Um, so, so just um, always, does anybody have any questions or any thoughts or? We have different ages from four, mm -hmm. and I guess for, for a little while we're gonna be having a high school. So a mixed group in one yeah. class. Okay, but my question is this, how, what translation do you use? Do you go start with a thought by thought and then progress up or do you? You know what, I would, because Pastor Ray teaches out of New King James Version. Okay. So I would new, use new, new King James Version because that's what he teaches out of. And I want these kids to understand it the same way that they're, they're going to understand it as they go to youth group and as they go into the sanctuary. Because basically, I know that that doesn't happen a lot, but that's what I would do. And um, I would do that because I feel like, okay, um, pastors, when they study, they use, they study and learn from the King James Version when they're looking at their Strong's and in their Bible programs, because that is the closest to the translation that we believe. So then, the, but we don't, they don't teach out of the King James Version. They mostly teach out of our church, teaches out of the new King James Version. So I would just use the same version myself because then we're all on the same page. And that's why when kids are in a classroom, I want them, to, I personally would want them to all have the same Bible because then we could all be looking at the same words. For me, that's important because sometimes as you go down in your translations, the words are different. Now, I'm not saying that I would never use um, the, a different version to explain it or to, you know, keep going on it. But when I said open your Bible, that's what I would use the same one that, that they're using as they progress. Because what we're doing is we're teaching children how to be lovers of God's word. And we're teaching them a skill that they will hopefully use in, you know, as they get older and older. Uh, there's been times when um, I have uh, taught high school kids and um, always like I will, like I would do it with this verse, okay? And I would do this and this and I would say, and I would give them scriptures. God's word is mighty and powerful and it's discerning and it, it pierces down to the mar marrow. And then I would give them other scriptures that talk about how, um, um, who God is and that he loves us and that his love is everlasting 
and that he, I, I, I'm, let, me, let, me, let me give you a scripture. I would go to like, oh, come on. it's time. I would go to like uh, Colossians. So I would go to, I would go to Colossians, you know, or something I'd say. Um, but I'll, uh, it's Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching one another, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all to the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. And I would say, you know what? Throughout your whole life, you're going to go through things, and it doesn't matter if you're 18 or 16 and you're doing bad things. And I literally, I would even say this to my kindergartners when I taught kindergarten. You're going to, your friends are going to be doing drugs. You're going to be doing drugs. You might make choices that are bad. You could be um, not obeying God. You could walk away from God. Your parents don't go to church. You don't go to church. But guess what? This is how God always wants you to live, no matter what. But guess what? If you start living like this, or maybe your mom and dad, are doing things they shouldn't be doing. And you could see by the way they live, guess what? God will always forgive us. And he will always find a way. And I would speak into their life and their future and say, guess what? he'll always forgive you. Even if you become this person, and I tell this to kindergartners, God will always want you to be this person and he can make you be that person. But you gotta do the things that he says. And what does he say? You gotta meditate on his word day and night. And you got to walk with the people who love God and you have to, and I would just speak into their future and say, but guess what? If you're going to, if you, cause there have been girls from when I taught in, when they were like juniors and seniors who come back to me and say, and when they are having problems and they come to me and go, and they know they can come to me because they know that I know, and you can always call and you can always talk to me and they will say, oh, I'm not living right for God. And I, I need a change or whatever because it's God's word and it's so mighty and powerful and it stays inside their heart and they know. So when you're teaching kids about how great God is, you teach kids that God's word is, will be with them for always in their whole life and that they can always come back and draw on whatever God said. But it's, it's black and white. God's word is black and white. There's no place in the middle. So I would use Psalm 1 and say there's no place in the middle. You're this person or you're that person. So if you're doing things that are ungodly, walking with the ungodly people and sitting in the seat of the scornful, and I know kids right now who are sitting in the seat of the scornful and they're on their Instagram and their Facebook and they're saying all these bad things about Christians. They were raised in Christian homes and godliness, but now they don't love God because they're sinning. And so they are scornful. You see that. And you tell them, if you're going to live like this, you're going to turn into the scornful. You're going to turn and you just draw it out into them. And, and it sticks with them. And that's all God wants us to do. And, you know, finding ways to do that with them is, is really just um, asking God to give you wisdom. You know, um, there's a lot of fun ways to play uh, games. There's Bible games. And I'm sure you teachers that are teaching now could think of a lot of other things you could do to teach God's word to kids. But it's, it's, it's coming from you, and it's, and it's, um, it's inspiring them. And uh, maybe some kids can't memorize stuff. But, but, you know, most kids can sing a song, you know. And most kids can... Um, play hopscotch you know you could draw a hopscotch on the board and on the ground and you guys could you could have the scripture on the uh, you could get those little papers that I just gave you and you could put those on the hopscotch and the first beginning of the verse could be in the beginning and it and when, every time they step on it they say, have to say blessed is the man and you know and you could do make a hopscotch you could make a trail around your whole classroom 
where they do that. You know, you could, there's a lot of things you could, you could get a jump rope. Okay, you might, I don't know if you can jump rope in your classes because they're kind of small. But, you know, there's lots of things you could do. You, everybody could have a ball. You could bounce it. You know, if you're in a mixed group with a bunch of different people, I don't know, did I answer your question? Um, if you're a mixed group with different kids, because like when we first started church, um, it was in my house. And so we were all in one room. So we had different levels. So then, you know, that's when the big kids help the little kids. Or that's when the big kids mentor the little kids and go, okay, I'm going to help you. Or I'll cut it, you glue it, or whatever. Or, you know, talking to each other. Or, hey, the big kids are going to put on a skit for the little kids. And the big kids are going to illustrate this verse. You know, they're going to act it out or whatever. Or they're going to memorize it and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna learn from them. Okay, big kids, you, next week you guys need to know this verse so we could teach it to the little kids and whatever. And you're just involving them in the process, and um, and it could be fun. And then the kids are like, "Oh man!" When the bell rings, or when the bell rings, but when you have to leave, you know, you just you just you're just making it fun for them. Does anybody have any other questions? No. Okay. Does anybody want any of this stuff? Oh well, well everybody, yeah. Well, here's another thing too. Um, yeah, if you want to, uh, like, for me, I thought, well, maybe I didn't want it, but I could at least you take it to remind myself, hey, I can make a bookmark, you know, or <laughs> whatever. So, uh-huh. I mean, a lot of the kids bring their Bibles, but like you said, there's so many different versions. And mm -hmm. you do try to read it, but I'm telling you, it takes so long. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any tips? Besides it takes long for them to read it? No, to find it. Oh, that's, no, th that's my tip. The, my tip is to have, my tip is to have Bibles that are all the same. So just, what do they do, for, what do, you do when they bring their own then? Then you, you just say, um, it, it depends, it depends. If, if they bring their own and there's like, I would have, since all the other kids already have it marked, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they like have their own Bible, then I, I, I try to help them get it maybe, or I try to find it. Or if I have a helper in the classroom, I say, can you put a, a, a paper clip in their Bible or something? Could you make a project out of that, marking each book in their Bible form? For the next week, yes, that's another thing. Yeah. Okay, everybody, we're going to mark. Yeah, it could be a project. You know, for for me, I I want them all to be on the same page with me. And so if they have their own Bible and they don't know how to navigate through it, I might just say, here, use mine. Yeah. yeah. It depends on their age. Um. So I'm normally in like the one to four-year-old class. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to keep the one-year-old's attention on things. Yeah. So. Like just suggest songs and dances. With them. Yeah, but 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 I literally still would have the Bible and I would show it to them. I said, "Here's my Bible," and I would still teach. I would still talk to them about it. And okay. and you know, like one year old, you know, there's only so much you could do. But I might even say, "Blessed," you know, I might even do a song for them, or I might even. Um, uh, show a little video with the song because you can almost google any song or any psalm one and i would just play it you know i mean i know they're one so their retention span is like three seconds so but you could still share in god's word you know uh there's still lots of things you could do puppets you know you could uh, have a little like this is you know a little puppet on your hand or you could even like write i mean i would do it write the scripture on my hand you know, for little kids and, you know, or say stuff like that. It's, it's hard with little babies, but there's a lot of really good Bible story books that you could read with them, you know. Um, I do a lot of, like, how we, we repeat it a lot, but I'll, like, I'll change my voice all the time. Yeah. Like, We're going to do a little Yeah, yeah. I even, when they love us, I'm going to do it like a little Yeah. Kid, yeah. You know? And, and they love it. You know, in, in this book, in this book on page 39, it says, do you realize how valuable the Bible is? It tells us who God is and what he d did to save us. It explains how we can have eternal life with Jesus. It tells of God's promises, his constant care and perfect peace. Read it and study it to find the treasures. Then be sure to put its truth into practice. So I might even have a treasure box with a bunch of verses in it. And I might say, okay, go pick out a treasure. And I might say, okay, this is the first word. Or I might, um, you know, uh, have all the verses that we're learning. 
and I would say, go pick out a treasure, and they'd all pick up the same verse because that's what we're learning. You know, or something like that. Before you come in, pick out the treasure. You know, just showing them and using, you know, illustrations of how God's word is a treasure. You know what I mean? Um, just any way you can. I mean, I, I was thinking, um, you, have, oh, that's, I, have you ever gotten a, a, when you were little, did you ever get like a, a shoebox? And then you put a rolled piece of paper and then you bring it through the top, you make a slit in the top. And then you get that roll paper and you, 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 it goes to the top and, and, you know, they could like draw a picture of the verse or they could write the word and then it just keeps rolling and rolling. I don't know if you use a, a stick or a pencil underneath and you, you roll it and then, you know, something like that. It could be their Bible treasure or, or box or you could illustrate it as their, their scroll, you know, cause in, in the Torah, you know, they read it open and they still do it now at the wall. They have the scrolls that they get and they open them and they roll them out. You could do that with any verse. You could do that in any way. You could, you know, like make a big, huge one and write the scripture. Huge, you know, and sorry, but you could, you know, there's lots of things you can do. And, you know, like I said, just, just putting that inside of them. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for loving us. We know, God, that you're a good God and that you do treasure your word even above your... <sighs> he says, uh, uh, God, we know and we thank you that you've given us your word so that we can know how to live. And so we pray that we would uh, illustrate that and motivate children and um, enforce that in their lives that, that apart from you, we can do nothing. But knowing who you are is by learning your word and putting it in our heart. And it says that we hide your word in our heart so we cannot sin, God. That we could just impress that upon children, God. And that they would always know that you have all the answers. And that they could experience the truths of your word. And it is a treasure. So we pray that you would just inspire these teachers. Give them strength and wisdom and the Holy Spirit, God, to do that in their classrooms. In Jesus' name, amen.